Hello fellow Minecraftians, Lost here with yet another tutorial. This one dealing with the Magma Crucible and the Liquid Transposer, seen here in my hand, from the Thermal Expansion mod included in the new Techit mod pack. The Magma Crucible, as you see here, um, like all the other machines from Thermal Expansion, can have its facing changed by right clicking with a crescent hammer, as you can see. It has fully adjustable input and output slots on all faces except the front. Um, and it runs, again, the same as the other machines, it runs on Buildcraft power, so Minecraft Jewels or MJ. Uh, it will run on any Buildcraft power source except Redstone engines, because they're not very good. Currently it's running on Redstone uh, a Redstone Energy Cell and Redstone Energy Conduit. You can check out my other tutorial for those if you wish. If you're watching my, all of my tutorials you'll be sick of me mentioning this, but it needs done. Now, the Magma Crucible itself, if we go inside it, it stores 40,000 Minecraft jewels. Now, again, this is a beast, so it is going to be sucking up your energy. Um, now, I personally mainly use it for making the more advanced machines using either liquid ender pearls, liquid redstone, or charged glowstone dust. Um, so it's very useful in that respect, but some people use it for making lava. Now you can make lava using a variety of things including cobblestone, normal stone, obsidian and netherrack. Now cobblestone requires an awful, awfully huge amount of MJ to convert so you have to be pretty desperate for lava in order to do so. Uh, stone uses less but it's still not very good. Obsidian uses a lot less but you're not in any getting any profit from it really. Netherrack however if you can throw a bit of netherrack in there, each each piece of netherrack will make a bucket of lava. So if you're powering this with magmatics, that one bucket of lava from each netherrack will greatly produce more. As long as you can keep feeding it netherrack, it's semi-self-sustaining. It will produce far more power than you are using to produce the lava in the first place. Um, and I'm going to be using lava here for the tutorial, just because it's it's nice and simple. Um, yeah, so as I said, people use it to power their bases by just collecting netherrack, either by quarrying or just going in there with an efficiency 5 pickaxe or something and just ripping the nether to pieces. Um, I still think using lava power is a little bit cheaty, but I'm more than happy to use magmatics and things at the start of a, uh, at the start of a game because it's just so much easier and sterling engines and things are pretty terrible. Okay, so the Magma Crucible has one input and one liquid output. Um, you cannot take buckets out of it. You have to use a liquid transposer to remove any contents. Um, but you can pipe in or out of any side. Now, it's currently set to output on the right, which is the orange there. Again, the green part here is the configuration, and you can set it up however you like just by clicking on it to adjust. Obviously, that means that there's no interaction there. Now, if we were to put a tank there, and a pipe, waterproof pipe, mind you, there, it will auto-output, much like all the other thermal expansion machines. But we don't want to get it too far, so we'll stop that in its tracks there. Now, onto the liquid transposer. You will be using this to either fill uh, unattuned tesseracts, empty energy cells, or illuminators, um, also buckets, there's uh, another one of its main uses, but if we pop it down there it should automatically fill from the right hand side there, as I believe it's standard set up to Im input from the left. Yep, see there we go, it's going in there. Now the liquid transposer takes four Minecraft jewels per tick max, so again this is it's actually pretty efficient. It is kind of a beast, it takes an awful lot more than or it takes double some of the thermal expansion machines. It has a uh, item input and output seen here. The input would be there, the output is there, and you have a liquid storage. Um, so you can either pump liquids in or pump liquids out. Now currently it's set up like this. It's currently set to pump liquids out via the items there. So if we were to put a bucket in there it would fill the bucket. Nice and simple. If you were to hit this button, 
it would empty buckets. So there we go. Look, and obviously bucket stack. So it'll take to, it'll take up to sixteen there. So yeah, nice and simple. Um, excuse me, one moment. Sorry about that. Just dealing with the kids. Where were we? Uh, yeah, buckets in, buckets out. Uh, yeah, okay, etc. Right, as I was saying, if you were doing buckets out, the bucket would drop, the filled bucket would drop into the red section there. Now, oh, it's already set up on the right here um, for exporting buckets. So, oh, I don't have any pipes. Don't need one. Let's try it. Just straight chest. There we go. Now, if we popped a chest there, it would automatically pop the bucket out into there. And we could put a pipe on there and it would pipe to wherever we wanted them. Uh, same goes as it's blue is in, if we were to say the top was blue and we I don't have any hoppers or anything but we could pipe straight into the top, we could pipe in empty buckets so they would drop in there quite happily and then they would fill up quite happily. Again automatically emptying onto the in, into the output chest here or we could have it set up the other way and we could automatically be pumping liquids in via buckets like so and again the empty buckets would automatically be going into this chest or piping out to wherever we had them so you can make quite a contrived uh, fuel, oil, milk all man any form of liquids, water, anything you could have coming in or out via buckets you can also, as I said, empty buckets. So if, you, if you're emptying buckets, like we're set up here now, you'll see that this side is yellow. Now, if we set this side to yellow instead, rather than digging holes, so the liquid would now, it would be emptying buckets, and then the liquid would be in the yellow section here, pumping out from this side. So if we move this chest again, and we were to have tanks here, it would automatically empty your buckets and then put them on here. So your buckets would head off and go collect more and then keep coming back. Now personally I find the bucket system fairly inefficient when you can just pump between tanks using tesseracts or the phase pipes. Um, but there you go, you have the basics of the magma crucible and the liquid transposer. Uh, fully adjustable. I hope this was relatively helpful for you all. Take it easy guys, have fun.